All right, let's get in and talk about goals. So we got to have an objective as artists. It helps if we have a destination, right? So let me ask you a question. Other than your life, what is the most important commodity that you have? Well, you might say love, but you can lose love and get it back. How about money? You can lose money and make it back. You can lose a car and make it back. You can lose weight and gain it back. Okay. But time, time is something that never comes back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So I like to say that time is our most valuable commodity. So we don't want to waste it, especially as artists. Our time is limited. So we want to make it count. Now setting goals this is something that I, uh, I'm not a list maker. And so setting goals is difficult for me. You know, I'm an artist. I'm a free spirit. I don't want to make lists. I don't want to set goals out there and then put time limits on them. But I've had to learn to do that. And you might be like me. So I, I want to kind of teach you how to do that. Now, Michael Hyatt, who is a goal setting master guru, out there he said there's two kinds of lives there's the the drifting life right it just drifts never goes anywhere and there's the driven life and that person is just type a right and they're just going 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 never stop doing never stop achieving and either of these positions here are really not desirable you don't want to drift and you don't want to be driven because this can lead to health problems right it can break up your relationships it can strain them right break them up and so we want to find something that works that we can avoid drifting or being driven so let's first look at the benefits of setting goals. You know, after doing this, you probably have a better sense of your direction in life, in your career, etc. That's good stuff. You'll probably have a feeling of excitement. You need that. That's fuel for moving forward. Excitement for your future. You probably feel like being an artist is possible and not impossible. That's a good thing. These are all good things. You'll probably be more optimistic because of that. And you'll be you'll be more receptive and ready to go to the next level. So those are some of the benefits of setting goals. Well, let's look at why goals fail. What are the top reasons that goals fail? Well, again, Michael Hyatt, the guru of goal setting, says there's four main reasons. And number one is lack of what? clarity number two lack of motivation just not motivated to do it right lack of activation you don't engage right if you're not motivated you won't activate and then there's the lack of visibility. That's number four. If you don't see your goals, if you don't have them in front of you as some kind of list, a place where you can see them, uh, you probably won't achieve the goals. They'll just disappear. You'll forget about them. 
but I'm going to add two more reasons. Let me get rid of this for now. Okay, I'm going to add two more reasons for goal failure. And number five is unrealistic expectations. I think that's a big one for many people. It's a big one for me because if you don't know how to set goals, you may go in the wrong direction. You know, thinking I got to dream big. And so you just have these huge leaps of unrealistic expectations. That's one reason for goal failure. And then number six is there's no strategy, right? You might have this destination, a huge expectation, but you have no way of getting there, right? You need a plan to execute and get you to the goal, right? Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Okay. We've looked at the benefits. We've looked at why goals fail. Most often we need kind of a strategy. So let's look at this thing called smarter goals. You probably heard of this. It's out there. It's an acronym. Smarter stands for something. You've probably heard for, of smart goals. So smarter goals are specific. They're measurable. Actionable. Now if you've never heard of this, it's probably start to make sense, right? We're breaking this thing down from big huge problem into smaller bite-sized problems. They gotta be a little bit risky. They have to be outside your comfort zone. Time keyed or time bound. It's gotta be an end date, right? A due date. They have to be exciting, right? They gotta be something you wanna do that gets you supercharged. And then they have to be relevant right if they're not relevant they're really not worth doing right so there's this is kind of a an evaluation we're saying this thing a is better than this thing b or c or even d so we're kind of creating a a value with a on the top that's the thing we're shooting for Right? Everything else is kind of below that, but we want to get to this place here. Okay, good. So those are your smarter goals. If uh, you haven't heard of that, it's definitely a powerful thing. So let's keep moving here. So how do we walk out those smarter goals? How do we really just do this? Because I've told you a bunch of a bunch of definitions and a bunch of reasons why it's good, why it isn't good, what gets in the way and causing failure. So look, let's just focus. Let's get our focus going for this lesson. We're just gonna focus in on one main goal just one main goal for the year let's say you're probably going to have some other sub goals right but let's just keep it to one right now and see how this works once you focus on that goal and you have it clearly what it is you want to get really clear on something else. And that is the why question. You got to get clear on this. You need clarity. Because if you can get clear on this, it's often said, if any man has a why, he can bear any how. Let me say that again. 
If someone has a good why, they can bear any how. In other words, they can get through any hardship because they have a reason, a why. What's making them tick? What's motivating them? Right, because everybody has kind of a, a Polaris star, right? They have like a North Star that guides them, right? Ships, in the olden days, they used to use the North Star to navigate. And so people are always optimizing themselves for something. There's something motivating every action, right? Just about. You go to work. Why? You need money. Okay. You need love. So you reach out. You start talking to people. You start going out on dates. You know, the, re the reason is, is that you need intimacy in your life. So you're trying to build something and you're trying to use good behaviors to make that possible, to make it happen in the future. So the motivation, the why is super important, you know, because your why provides that a connection to the goal. I'd say this is really important. The why provides connection to the goal, right? You need that connection because if you don't have the connection, the first obstacle that comes along is just going to derail you, right? You're going to stop. You're going to fail. You're going to fold. So you've got to have the really good, clear why because it's the connection. It's the glue, really, to keep you in relationship, connected to your goal. So let's get real clear on the why. Okay, we got that. Let's go to the next thing here. So I'd say the first step, after you get your why, is one. Find your main goal. And your why. The why, again, could be, I want to make money, right? I'm bored, so I want to have an active life. I want to do something interesting. I want to make a difference in other people's lives. Okay, I think you get the picture. The number two, you're going to uh, kind of set micro goals or divide that up, that major goal, into micro goals. I'll explain that. And then you'll create a specific deadline. You'll set that out in the future. It's important you do that and to set, set it into the future. You got to put it on your calendar. Okay. So let's look at the, the micro goals. Okay, so that's taking that steep ascent to your goal up here, and it's really giving you platforms, small enough, right? Enough to actually make it up the slope because it can be pretty steep. It can be setting a goal is pretty hard. It's not an easy thing. So we kind of need these incremental steps. That's our micro goals. That's what basically we set us up for and we're going to get specific about this in a few minutes but after you set those micro goals the fourth thing you want to do is you want to think about your resources that's fuel that you need to get you there so it could be money right 
you need money for, let's say, marketing yourself on social media, Facebook ads, Google ads, business cards, and so on. You need money for equipment, tools, right? You need paper, you need paint, you need computer programs, all that kind of stuff. You need time, right? That's a resource. So you might think about getting some apps that help you track time. I have some apps that help me do that. One is called Do, and that puts something on a schedule, a, a task, and I can set it for a time, specific time and day, and then my phone will remind me. So it's a little reminder. There's another one called Sloth. That's a timer. And there is a third one. It's called Focus Keeper. The idea with that one is that you set a certain block of time, let's say 20, 25 minutes, where you're very focused. And then it'll switch to like a five minute break. So you have 25 minutes, you know, intense focus. And then you have a five minute break. And it just keeps you on track instead of focusing and suddenly it's an hour, two hours later, and then you haven't had a break. You start to feel hungry and tired. Um, this breaks it up and keeps, uh, kind of keeps it moving in a more healthy way. So those are things like resources. You know, you need your health. That's a resource. So you probably want to do some exercise, right? And just keep you, keep you healthy, take breaks like I just mentioned. What else? There could be relationships. Those are resources. So all the things, just think about all the things you need to get you to your goal, right? You might need a car, okay? You might need a job while you're working on that goal. Okay, so whatever it is, get specific about those things. Okay, let's go to number five. Let's go here to number five. Let me see. Okay, the number five thing. You're going to track your progress. This is the hard part, I think. Maybe all of it's hard, but tracking your progress so you'll have some system some way where you can take a look at where you are in the process you'll need something that says yep finished it or something that says you know in progress still in the queue unfinished and something that says you know Oops, you know, not done, ran into some problems or <laughs> whatever, right? So you have these three states of yes, no, and, you know, working. Just real simple. Just so you can, it's like, you know, when a teacher grades you and gives you a grade, it's not a personal evaluation. It's just giving you realistic data on where you're at. And then if you can track that, you can, you know, find the problems, keep on it, and mark it off when you've done it. And, and that's really important. So what are some of these the obstacles to all this? Well, we talked about some things, but we get a little bit more specific. How about... I don't have a precious resource called time. My precious resource time is all used up. I don't have money to do this, right? Yeah, I can sympathize with that, I understand. 
It's an obstacle. And we have to find solutions for these things. How about perfectionism? That's a big one that would get in my way. It would cause anxiety and stress because if I couldn't do it perfect, I just wouldn't do it. That, that's not good. That's like one option. Here's the option A. And if I can't do that A, I got no other options. I got blank, right? But if I have the ability to see maybe there's two options, A and D, and a few possibilities in between. There's even B and C. Or maybe there's just A and B. How about A and B? So I'm opening it up to possibilities, right? Because perfectionism is a closed circuit. How about limiting beliefs? Beliefs. I can't do it, I'm not good enough, I'm too old, right? Too young. One more. Let's say maybe there's no one, no one to show me, me, how. And then there's fears, right? Like afraid to fail, or even bizarrely afraid to succeed. Whatever. I'm afraid I'll waste my time <laughs> I'm afraid I'll lose my money I'm afraid I'll look stupid that's a big one embarrassed right stupid and embarrassed in front of people well yep you will you know you don't want to but you kind of will but it means that you're making progress if you're feeling stupid and embarrassed you're probably moving that's a good thing. You're not in your comfort zone. Okay? Perfect. You don't want to be in your comfort zone. If you are, you're not moving. You're not going anywhere. Most likely. All right. So I've made a little table, kind of a, a worksheet. I'm going to provide this for you. I'm going to give this to you. But you can write this down in a book. I mean, it's just... You can do it any way you want, but let's look at it. This kind of condenses everything. Now, in column one, you've got your main goal. And that could be, I want to be a better artist isn't what we're looking for. That's not specific enough, right? It's too, it's too wide. It's too big of a goal. It's too ambitious. It's not clear. So maybe you want to say something like, you know, I want to go to the San Diego Comic-Con. The San Diego Con this year. Okay. All right. Why? That's a good goal. Why? Well, it's going to it's going to give me exposure. Maybe it'll help me make some money. I can sell some books, some art. Maybe I can meet lots of people, you know, and I can network. Okay, maybe I can help others. So these are all really good sort of it's fuel, it's your why, it's your connection to this main goal. And so then you've got your micro goals. Let's zoom in here. Your micro goals, how are you gonna break that down? All right, you're gonna to need to create, create art. You're gonna need lots of stuff. So you need time to do that. Number two, you're going to get your business cards. Right? You need to exchange information, let people know you're out there, who you are, 
they're never going to remember you if you don't give them a business card. Okay, what else? You know, you're going to call, you're going to go to the website and reserve you know, a spot, buy a ticket. And then you're going to print your stuff. You're going to frame your stuff. And just get ready, right? Because it's going to come. It's some months away, but it's going to come quick. And that when could be, well, it's somewhat, sometime in July is the con. Okay. So you know when. And then you can track your progress. And you can put this stuff in your sketchbook. Just have it somewhere where you can see it. You have to be able to see it because that's one of the major reasons the goals fail, right? Is it's not visible. So you've got to see it. You can do it in, you know, a Word document. You can do it in your sketchbook. You can just draw this table out. You can do it in Excel and then track your progress. And then, yes, maybe, or not yet, <laughs> right? This is good stuff. So maybe we can take like another example. So maybe you want to learn how to, you know, draw figures. Why? Because you love it. Because it gives you energy. Because you want to be a professional painter or character designer or you want to be a fine artist or whatever the case is right you want to teach you want to be a teacher and you want to teach it so that's your why maybe you, again you want to make money you want to help others you want to be relevant okay then your micro goals How are we going to break it down? How are we going to get here? Well, I'm going to have to learn about gesture to give it life. I'm going to have to learn about construction, how to put it down on the page convincingly. I'm going to have to learn about anatomy, muscle, bone, Right? I'm going to have to learn about some techniques. What kind of medium am I going to use? Pen, pencil, charcoal, paint, oil paint? Right? When am I going to do this? Okay. So let's set something. Let's break it down a little bit. Let's say we want to have a goal, you know, in six months. So in the first, let's say, you know, two weeks, one to two weeks, I'm going to study gesture. Then one to two weeks, I'm going to study construction. Then let's say four weeks, I'm going to study anatomy. And then I'm going to give myself another four weeks or more for techniques. I'm going to explore different tech we techniques. Maybe it's six weeks. Maybe it's longer. Maybe this is maybe this is one year, right? Or you'll do it for six months, evaluate it, and then set another goal for another six months. And so this is going to help you with that first principles idea, breaking something bigger, big down into some smaller constituent parts that you can handle. 
And that definitely helps you succeed, right? And it gives you energy because as you succeed, you get more excited and you see it's possible. And then you track your progress. Okay. So the, hopefully those are some good kind of examples there that help you out. One of the other things that we want to do is make a commitment to ourselves to this. So what's that going to kind of look like? Okay, so you want to write like a personal declaration. Okay, we're going to get a little bit psychological here because this is psychological. So it's got to be it's got to be meaningful. It's going to be something that states that, you know, what your goals are. These are my goals. Right? Get it down on paper. These are my aspirations. Something about getting it down on paper. Uh, these are your intentions, right? Intentions. It gets it moving. It gets it out there. It gets it more real. And we can see if they're actually realistic, right? It's kind of, you know, what you want to keep and what you want to throw away. Then you start your day. You kind of focus on this. You meditate on this. Focus and meditate on this personal declaration. And that's going to help you start to believe it. Because believe me, when you set a goal in motion, there's all these things that are going to come against it. It's just the way it is. It's going to start a little pressure. So like a little war that says, I'm going to stand up against you here because you want to do this. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. So you need to start to believe it. You got to get rid of the limiting beliefs and start to believe you can do this. And then your actions will start to reflect that. They'll start to follow your beliefs, right? And then it'll be like a feedback loop. Your actions will influence your beliefs. Beliefs will influence your emotions and actions like that. And you'll be basically, this whole thing is you'll be transforming yourself. Because each time you take a new step up, right, you're going to need a new, a new version of you, right? This one was down here. It wasn't enough to get to here yet. And then you sort of bring all this stuff into play and, and it brings a new you that helps you get here. And then to get to that next place that's higher, you're going to need another, you know, new version of yourself, a new, new version, let's say, new version of self, envious, <laughs> envious, okay, and so on like that, because you're here and it's adequate for here, but it's not yet adequate for there. So you're going to keep transforming yourself. And so you need to believe it. You need to take action. And... You know, basically you need power, you need resources for that. You need to basically kind of support this process, both physically and mentally. In this personal declaration, there's a few kind of steps to this. Let's say step one is the self affirmation. It's 
Remember, this is stuff that you're going to meditate on in the morning and start to make this happen, begin to believe it. And so you're going to speak, you're going to speak in the present. In other words, I am statements. Zoom on this a little bit. I am action words like doing. I am believing. They're definitely statements in the now because we're leaving the past behind and we're moving forward. Start to think about what it would be like if the struggles that are holding you back are gone. The limiting beliefs. Think about the potential. You know, what would it be like if I actually attain these goals? What's my, how's my life going to change? Right? Am I going to have more money, more time, more energy, better lifestyle? Will I have more respect? Will I just have better work? Will I just be more pleased with myself and happy? So speak to the struggles in a positive attitude and shift the struggles into actions. So you want to sort of transform the struggles by speaking them, transform them into actions that start to affect change. Delta is change, the Greek symbol for change. And here's another big thing is practicing self-compassion in this process or self-empathy, right? Have some empathy for yourself. Think of yourself as someone that you're responsible for. How would you treat someone that you love and you're responsible for? So this compassion and empathy, give it to yourself. Extend it to yourself. Take care of your health, your mental health, your physical health, and your spiritual health. Really nourish those things because you're going to need those things as platforms, as foundations to help keep you up and keep you moving. So you want to have another piece of this. We talked about that self-affirmation in step one. And then really having this compassion for yourself because you're going to fall, right? You're going to make mistakes. But by transforming these struggles, right? By, by speaking to those struggles, you know they're there. Transforming them into actions that are going to affect change. Well, okay, how do we do that? Let's look at failure just a little bit. So again, failure is going to happen, but failure really kind of says that you're, you're moving and it's part of the process. Failure is part of the process. Okay, let's go over here. Failure. Let's look how to frame, look at this, welcome it, frame it. So you want to have a growth mindset. Failure is not a growth mindset. It's, it's a stuck mindset. This is kind of can be a stuck mindset. You want to have a growth mindset and cultivate that. So one, you can embrace your imperfections. You're not perfect. No one is. No one is. You know, I didn't realize that for a long time. Being a perfectionist, I thought it was just me that was imperfect and everybody else had it together. But everyone is imperfect, man. And that that took a long time to figure that out. I don't know why. But I was stuck. So you can reframe the failure as an opportunity. I 
think there's that Chinese philosophy that says that chaos in chaos is opportunity. And there's a symbol for that. I can't recall what it is. So reframe, right? Failure as an opportunity. Reframe failure as a, you know, a step in the process. It means you're moving. It means you're moving. That's huge. Okay. Five. You know, develop your self-talk so that it's encouraging. Encouraging self talk instead of saying god i fail all the time say yeah i sometimes fail just reframe it right just move the frame a little bit reframe so you have a new way of looking at it and that reframe is is a positive take on it not negative just reframe it. Have an always learning mentality. Have an always learning mindset. That's what I have. I can't stop learning. I love learning. I'm maybe there's an, an element of insecurity in that, but it's good. Not all insecurity is bad because it keeps you moving not you know all perfectionism isn't totally bad because it keeps you striving to get better so it's sort of taking imperfection taking the failures and harnessing them and taking those struggles right and changing them reframing them into actions that affect change you know positive change and that's how you transform those things and, you know, succeed and deal with all the junk that comes up, with all the obstacles and inside and out that try to keep you down. And just one more thing. We want to make this a habit. Right? Habit. And that way we can build some consistency into our lives. And we can do that in three steps. So if it doesn't become a habit and it just drops off, then our goals won't get done and we'll fail and our goals will forget about them and we'll have that goal failure feeling. And, and you know, we're going to feel frustrated, let down like a failure and all that sort of stuff. So habit building, step one. Start small. Number two, plan it. That's the hardest part, right? Plan it into your day and write it down. Have it somewhere where it can be seen. Because if it's not seen, you'll forget about it. Put it on, you know, your sketchbook, your calendar, in one note, somewhere in your computer, using notes. And then step three. This is big. This is part of your commitment, I think. Is, and the compassion and empathy is to reward yourself. That's like super big, right? Reward yourself. Gotta give yourself that reward. It's gonna give you that positive feeling that you need to keep moving forward. Reward yourself. 
for example, you know, after I complete this, I'm going to you know, buy myself that special thing that you want. You know, maybe it's take yourself out to dinner to that special kind of food and place that you like. Maybe you'll buy yourself some kind of treat. Maybe it's uh, some equipment that you want. Maybe it's you'll go uh, on a trip, right? Could be small, could be big, just some incentive, you know? And you could say, you know, I will do this by, you know, in one week. By one week or in one week after I finish my goal, I'll do this. All right. After I achieve A, my goal, I will do B. And B will happen in one week. Okay. It could be, you know, after two weeks. after two weeks of doing this of you know keeping these setting these goals and keeping it a habit right you need to reward yourself consistently so after two weeks I will dot 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 you name it right maybe I'll I will go somewhere the first one was you know I'll buy myself something then I'll go somewhere. Maybe it's a little bit bigger incentive, right? A little bit bigger reward. And then after one month, I will do something. You know, maybe I'll go somewhere. Maybe I'll do something. Maybe I'll take a class with the famous teacher whose work that I like, you know, maybe I'll go somewhere with my boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe I'll just sleep. Just be good to myself. All this stuff is just to be good for yourself, good to yourself. And it's a feedback loop because the more you feel good and do good, then you're going to want to work, right? You'll work, you'll do more work, <laughs> you'll have the fuel, you'll have the want to, and you need that want to. So that's pretty much it for goals. I'm gonna leave this goal template uh, setting for you. It's like a, a thing that I developed and I'll put it there for you if it can help you do all this stuff and just keep it simple. Right, just do one main goal like we talked about over here. Just get one main goal. And get your micro goals. Set a date. Track your progress. Right? And if you can, write out some of that commitment stuff and those affirmation things. It's all gonna help. It takes time, but just, right, we're, we're trying not to waste time. This is good time taken. It's not wasted time. Okay, it's beneficial. So good luck with that, and we'll see you in the next objective. All right.